Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I am Spencer, your host, and it's just so wonderful to see you here today. Thank you. You all get a gold star for attending today's class. Uh, today is September 1st, new month, my birthday month. It is 7.05 a.m. Uh, I'm recording still in my work office. Um, I have skipped the last couple of episodes. Hopefully, there were a couple of guests on the Elements episode. And I'm thinking I should get an elephant expert on the previous episode. Hmm. Or maybe somebody involved in the movie Elemental. That would be cool. I'm going to have to get working on that. So you already know what happened because this episode is airing after those episodes. I have no idea what the future will hold. Let's talk about the words in this episode. We have more elephant words. We have the first word. Now, I thought this was elephantitis, but it's not. Uh, in fact, I don't think elephantitis is in this book at all, unless it couldn't have been in the previous episode, was it? No, nope, doesn't look like it. We have elephantiasis. Now, maybe it's the same thing that as elephantitis. It is spelled E L E P H. A-N-T-I-A-S-I-S, elephantiasis. Uh, you can also say elephantiasis, elephin, elephan. Okay, this is a noun from 1562. Number one, enlargement and thickening of tissues, specifically the, en the enormous enlargement of a limb or the scrotum caused by obstruction of lymphatics by filarial worms. Okay, so this does sound pretty similar to what I thought was elephantitis, but maybe maybe that's the incorrect word for this. Elephantiasis seems more accurate, or they're similar but different. The world may never know. Uh, but it gives us some, some really interesting specific information. Um, Enormous enlargement of, specifically, a limb or the scrotum. I'm not sure why they decided to go with the scrotum as the example. Maybe that is such a common thing that would be obstructed, that have obstruction of lymphatics by filarial worms. Is that how you get elephantiasis? Because of filarial worms, filarial worms, what are those? Uh, the species name for those are Wucheria bancrofti. Hmm, interesting. I wonder what the history is of that name. Uh, obstruction of lymphatics. So the filarial worms are getting up in your lymphatics, and there's uh, an obstruction of something. Um, and so then the tissue gets thick and enlarged and probably painful. Could you imagine all of a sudden your arm just gets very big or any other part of your body? Yeah, it doesn't sound very fun. Let's put a link in the show notes for elephantiasis. Number two, an undesirable, usually enormous growth enlargement or overdevelopment as in this is so different than the number one elephantiasis of the imagination La -da 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 -da. my imagination is enormous has enormous growth enlargement or overdevelopment hmm is that possible to have an overdeveloped enlarged or grown imagination? Where do we use this in context? But anything, ah, any, it's, it's an undesirable. So if it's, if your imagination is undesirably large, expansive, creative, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say, ah, I got, I got too much of an imagination. I'm sorry. I'm too creative. My brain just goes in all the places and I'm constantly thinking of Fantastic creative ideas. My imagination goes all over the place. I guess, theoretically, it could get to the point where y you have too so much of an imagination that you were like, 
getting away from real life, the real world, and you are living in this fantasy and you're like not taking care of yourself or other people or your heart. I don't know. It could potentially get that far. That seems extreme, but hey, it's possible. Uh, this is a new Latin word, f also from the Latin word, which is a kind of leprosy, uh, which is from the Greek elephant. I guess the Greek word is elephant, which, of course, we learned in the previous episode. But you've learned it. I haven't learned it yet. And uh, elephantiasis, it's a kind of leprosy. So does that mean that if you have this growth of something, if your scrotum is extremely enlarged, that is that technically a form of leprosy? Eeeh. You okay. Uh, it's time to make a sound effect, and we're going to go whoop. The next word is elephantine or elephantine. Or you can emphasize the first syllable more, elephantine. I guess that's how you would say it. Adjective from 1610, 1A, having Enormous size or strength, and the synonym is massive. This podcast is not an elephantine podcast because it is uh, does not have a massive following. Uh, but it does have a massive amount of episodes, uh, so it would be elephantine in that way. It's elephantine. The episodes are elephantine. 1B. The synonyms, so anything that's just enormous size or strength, large, big, and strong, is elephantine. 1B, the synonyms are clumsy and ponderous, as in elephantine verse. Well, that's an interesting way to describe what I assume is poetry in this context. Clumsy and ponderous. So... Sometimes my talking can be elephantine because it is clumsy and ponderous. Um, you know, we think of, uh, I, I guess we think of elephants as being clumsy. Maybe they're very, they're large and slow. They can run, but they're typically just bloom, 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 bloom. That's the sound they make. And ponderous, I guess if you're slow, you're very thinky, thinking a lot. Um, but verse, if you're, if you're poetry is written in a clumsy or ponderous way it would be elephantine yeah if somebody just said elephantine verse i would genuinely have no idea what they're talking about it's clumsy it's not written very well i think it's a negative description ponderous oh it makes you think but i think of that as different as than clumsy mm, i don't know okay number two of or relating to an elephant. It's elephantine. It's literally about an elephant. It's elephantine. They got a big old trunk. They got a big old ears. They got a big old body. They, they, they live a long time. They, they love their family. They're highly protective of their, uh, of their children. Uh, they mourn when somebody dies. They got a clan, they, a group that they hang out with. Uh, what else? They like dust and mud and water and things and they're great they're smart Doop. next is elephant in the room four words from 1985 an obvious major problem or issue that people avoid discussing or acknowledging no we cannot discuss the elephant in the room everybody's aware of it we're all thinking it but we're just not going to talk about it it's this is literally, not literally, it feels literally like there's an elephant in the room. Are we not going to talk about that large elephant with the trunk that's putting its trunk in everybody's faces? No, let's not talk about it. I want to find where this phrase came from and put it in the show notes because I am fascinated. Wait, who, who said this? Why did they say this? The first time that somebody said this, they're like, what? What, are, what are you talking about? The elephant? In the room? What elephant? I'm sure I'm sure it made sense at the time. Bleep. Next is elephant seal. Two words. Noun from 1839. If you make one of those wax seals that you put on your handwritten letters that you write in cursive, 
with ink with a, f a quill pen and you seal it up with the wax you make an elephant image on the thing that would be an elephant seal that's not what we're talking about we are talking about either or either of two very large seals characterized by a long inflatable proboscis and the genus name is Mirunga, and they are of the family Fossidae. But we have an A and a B, so maybe these are the two, the two of the seals. A, one, found in Pacific coastal waters from southeastern Alaska to Baja, California. So the bottom part of Alaska, beep, 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 all the way down to Baja, California, and that's the way bottom of California. So these these seals, uh, the species name is Merunga. Angustirostris, Angustirostris, that's close enough, uh, those live in the Pacific Ocean on the east coast of the Pacific Ocean, which is the west coast of America, and all from Alaska down to basically Mexico. The elephant seal. That's a huge range. It's probably cold up there and warm down there, and they can deal with all those temperatures. But once you get up to further north in Alaska, it's probably too cold for them. And then further south, it gets too warm for them, I would guess. B. This, we're talking about one of these large seals. Elephant seals. Large seals. They are clumsy and ponderous and massive. Maybe. Uh, B. One found in coastal waters of sub-Antarctic islands and Patagonia. The species name for this one is Mirunga. Leonina, 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 something. Uh, so coastal waters of sub-Antarctic islands. Where are the sub-Antarctic islands? Computer, sub-Antarctic? What's, what's below the Antarctic? The sub-Antarctic re is a region in the southern hemisphere imme located immediately north of the Antarctic region. Okay, so they're just above that. So it's probably similarly located to... So I'm thinking of like Alaska is so many degrees above the equator, north. So this sub-Antarctic might, might be similarly, but to the south. Similarly positioned to the south. Uh, there's New, New, the New Zealand sub-Antarctic islands. Uh, Patagonia must be in that region. Now, I, I don't know if this is equal to Alaska, but north and south, I'm not sure. But, you know, it's in that, in that region. Um, so, so basically, we got, we got some living in the northern hemisphere, uh, and then we got some living in the southern hemisphere. I think that's the difference. Uh, and obviously, obviously, I'm going to have to post a picture on social media for an elephant seal because they're probably very cute. And what's the other thing about them? They have a long inflatable proboscis. Is that its nose? It's probably its nose. It's inflatable? How is it inflatable? Can they put air into it? And why do they do this? To help them float? To help hold air? Hold their breath? What... I did not know these things were inflatable. Hmm. Boop. Elephant's ear is next. Two words, and yes, there is an apostrophe S. Elephants. It's the ear that belongs to the elephant. Noun from 1866. Any of several large-leaved plants of the Arum family, as A. The synonym is taro, T-A-R-O. Uh, hmm. I thought taro was a root. It could be a root. I don't know. We've had um taro chips. They take it and they slice them and they fry them just like potato chips, but I think that they're a bit healthier. So uh, I guess I guess those have large leaves and they're part of the arum family. B. Any of a genus of tropical Asian perennial herbs cultivated as ornamentals for their large, heavily veined basil leaves. Basil there is B-A-S-A-L, not the herb basil, which has a, an I. Uh, the genus name is Alocasia or Alocasia. 
Uh, so basically, it's just uh, they got large leaves, and they are probably shaped similar to an elephant's ear, uh, and that's where it got its name, its common name, if you will. Will you? Yes, you will. I have to, uh, if I didn't mention it in the previous episode, which I still could possibly, uh, uh, I will mention it here. I can't, I can't not mention the movie Dumbo. Uh, he's got the big old ears, and it's... It's a sad movie, um, but it. Ooh, I just I have I have a uh, have a uh, a nostalgic love for this movie because I saw it when I was a kid. We 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 recorded it when it was playing on TV. We recorded it onto a VHS, uh, and I think I still have it somewhere with the commercials. And then there's a, a couple other Disney animated shorts beforehand, and. Uh, you know, he, he comes out and, he, and he, he sneezes and he's got the big old ears and they start making fun of him. And you you can't help but feel bad for cute little Dumbo. Oh, I love Dumbo. I love that whole movie. He's got elephant ears. That's the connection. Moving on. Boop. Now we're done with elephants. Now we have the word Eleusian. Eleusian. Yeah. I think that's how you say it. Capital E L E U S I N I A N. Ilu nope, I said it wrong. Eleusinian. I don't know how I missed the uh, the emphasis there. Eleusinian. That's d- very different from what I was saying. I was saying Eleusian? Psh, nah. Psh, psh, nah. Eleusinian. Adjective from 1591. That's a much more fun word to say. Eleusinian, this is of or relating to ancient Eleusis or to the religious mysteries celebrated there in worship of Demeter and Persephone. Well, that seems Greek, I think. Ancient Eleusis. I do not see Eleusis uh, here in this book, so we're not going to get to learn about that, but we can post a link in the show notes for Eleusis and Eleusinian, and I don't know if I'm saying Eleusis right. Would it be Eleusis? El, 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 Eleusis. That seems right. I'll just go with that. Uh, ancient Eleusis, or to the religious mysteries celebrated there. There's religious mysteries pertaining to the worship of Demeter and Persephone. Um, those I think that they were Greek somethings. There's that new movie, it's like a vampire movie, something about the Demeter, and uh, so I, I don't know what the Demeter is. Maybe it's a vampire-y thing, and Persephone, I've heard of Persephone, but I can't remember who they are. She, I think, maybe? They? I don't know. Hmm. Whoop. Next is Elev, E-L-E-V, abbreviation for Elevation. Now I have to sneeze, so I'm going to cut it out, I think. It went away. Boop. Elevate is next. First form. You can, I guess in this context, say either elevate or elevate. Elevate. Adjective from the 14th century. This is archaic and the synonym is elevated. So maybe this is just something that's up higher than the other things. It's elevated. Elevate. Elevate. Hmm. Yeah, we don't we don't use this in this way anymore. Boop, boop. The second form of elevate, this one is a verb from the 15th century, starting with transitive. One, to lift up or make higher, and the synonym is raise. We're going to elevate a barn today with 50 people, as in elevate a patient's leg. You want to elevate their leg so the blood doesn't uh, go down with gravity and pool into the leg. Maybe they had surgery or something. You want to elevate it, get the blood draining back towards the heart. Also is in exercises that elevate the heart rate. Elevate your heart rate. I did that this morning. I did 15 minutes on a stationary bike and I elevated my heart rate. Number two. To raise in rank or status, as in, was elevated to chairman. 
sounds like a great position to be in. What's what's higher than a chairman? A stoolman. Next um, definition is number three. To improve morally, intellectually, or culturally, as in great books that both entertain and elevate their readers. They're elevating their smarts, their morals, their culture, I guess. Learning about the world, getting smarter, learning words, learning about different cultures. Yeah, that'll elevate you. Four, to raise the spirits of, and the synonym is elate. Elate, make very happy. That's elate. Uh, raise in the spirits. Oh, elevate me. Raise my spirits. I got, I don't know. Next is the intransitive definition, which is just to become elevated. And the synonym is rise. As in, his voice elevated to a shout. And boy, my belly is elevating because I need some food. Uh, so to become elevated. So something else is maybe making you or the thing elevated um his voice elevated to a shout his voice elevated because he was elevating it that's the transitive and the intransitive together i think the synonym for the whole thing is the word lift lift up your mugs and toast to words uh, there is etymology. It says it's basically from the Latin elevare, which is, or ele, eleware, I think they would say, which is the E prefix plus the word leware, which means to raise. And I don't know how it changes the definition when you add the E. What does eleware mean opposed to leware? It's probably very similar. Boop. Elevated. First form, adjective from 1553, 1A, raised, especially above the ground or other surface, as in an elevated highway. It's up there on top, above everything else, flying over the buildings. B, 1B, increased, especially abnormally, as in degree or amount, so something ooh this is you don't want you don't want well we do we have an example uh yes elevated blood pressure this is not a thing you want to be elevated your uh the degree or the amount of blood pressure that you have is higher than it is supposed to be it's increased but not in a good way that's why it's abnormal unfortunately Things like this are becoming more, quote-unquote, normal in terms of average. More people, I think, are having high blood pressure and stuff like that. And then the doctors are just prescribing medication instead of being like, uh, you know what, you should change your diet and you should exercise more. Maybe they say that too, but, but, but people also need to be more uh, receptive to that type of suggestion because... If you're just taking medications and then you're not fixing the underlying issues and then that's just going to lead to other illnesses and sicknesses and problems and you don't want to deal with that. You just don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. Okay, so yeah, elevated. What are other things? Your cholesterol. You don't want that to be elevated. Nope. 2A. Being morally or intellectually on a high plane. And the synonym is refined, as in elevated conversation. Yes, my darling, we are having an elevated conversation because we are so much better than everybody else, morally and intellectually. We have read all of the books, and we are just so cultured. You can't even touch us with, with your low culture. We are. We are on a higher plane than you. Blah. To be, synonyms are formal and dignified, as in elevated diction. That's how you talk. Formal and dignified. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely don't have formal 
or dignified, elevated diction. I mean, I can force it. You know, I gotta, I gotta say things clearly. But, uh, but yeah, in general, I'm like, nah, this, is, this is just the way I talk. I'm, I'm, I'm a schlub, pretty much. Number three, exhilarated in mood or feeling. That's elevated. There's no example there exhilarated in mood or feeling that's that's how we all want to feel all the time probably but you can't you just can't that's not how life works you gotta you gotta fluctuate if you're feeling elevated all the time how do you know what it feels like you're gonna get bored with that you gotta you gotta sometimes not feel so good we'll keep it to a minimum but let's try and feel better uh let's see no etymology so boop elevated second form noun from 1881 and the synonym is the the the, it's the word l e l it looks like it's the second form and uh oh we got to go back a ways for that one you know what this is probably like it's the elevated train i think uh yep 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 it's the train that's you just call it the elevated if you want people don't really do that but i think they should Boop. Elevation, noun from the 14th century. One, the height to which something is elevated. Something has been elevated up and it's at a certain height and that is its elevation. As A, 1A, the angular distance of something as a celestial object above the horizon. So, the moon, the sun, the stars, the planets, what is their elevation? So you take, you figure out the angle from the horizon. Where is it? Where's the sun? Oh, it's right up there. So the, how many ever degrees that is? It's 87.2 degrees. That's the sun's elevation. In that specific context, the actual elevation of the distance from the earth, I don't know if they ever described that. That's, you know, I don't know. 93 million miles, I think, possibly. 1B, the degree to which a gun is aimed above the horizon. Uh, Okay, so I guess if you're uh, shooting a gun or a cannon or something, you are doing the math, you're doing the physics, the geometry, because you want to get it over there, and you know how fast the, the bullet goes. And so you, if you shoot at the horizon, you're just, it's just going to go down. It's just going to go out and then down. It's not going to hit your target. But if you shoot it up, you're going to be able to go all the way to your thing. And there's a lot of math involved. Um, okay. 1C. The height above the level of the sea. And the synonym is altitude. So where is sea level? You want to go above that some amount. You know, some some cities and everything, they're they they they're like, oh, there there were this many meters above sea level. Uh, that's its elevation, its altitude. But then, if you're flying in a plane, uh, that's that's also your elevation or your altitude. The what the most planes fly at like thirty five thousand feet or something. What is that? What is that in meters? Like ten, ten thousand maybe, give or take. Next. Number two, a dancer's or an athlete's leap and seeming suspension in the air. Also, the ability to achieve an elevation. So just how high they can go? Uh, This is the noun. So the dancer's athlete's leap and seeming suspension in the air. It's interesting that they added that last part. They seem to be suspended briefly in the air. When they jump so high, they just they just sit there and hover there for a second, and then they come back down because you can't stay up there forever. You get bored. Uh, three, yes, three, an act or instance of elevating is an elevation. Four, something that is elevated, as for A, an elevated place. An elevated place, just any place that's been elevated. A room lifted up above everything else is an elevation. For B, a swelling, especially on the skin. Okay, so it's it's not elevated very high, but a little bit. You get a little bump 
on your thing. I once had a, a a banjo string break under my arm, and it hit hit the underside of my arm here. You Patreon people can see this, and uh, and it gave me a welt. Ooh, I got a welt so good, and it was elevated like multiple millimeters. It was a good one. Number five, the quality or state of being elevated. I'm in elevation. Six, a geometrical drawing that depicts one vertical plane of an object or structure. It's a drawing that depicts one vertical plane of an object or structure. Uh, well, I guess this is doesn't seem like it should be that complicated. Um, it's a drawing. It's Jim. I'm thinking of a blueprint of a building um, that depicts one vertical plane. So I guess if it's like maybe a straight on of a building that would it's the vertical and then you write down like how tall is this board how tall is this wall this roof that's its elevation i guess because yeah you're talking about the vertical plane goes from from the ground up Hmm. okay a synonym is the word height what's your elevation that's how instead of asking what somebody's height is i'm going to say what's your elevation six foot three I wish I were that tall. Boop. Our last word is elevator. E-L-E-V-A-T-O-R. Uh, when I was a kid, I was into like those games books. Do you remember those games books and magazines and stuff? And they had like word puzzles and other puzzles and stuff. And uh, I think it was in one of those that I read this. There was like a, a riddle or a joke that was like, what if... Ella Fitzgerald and Darth Vader got married. This makes no sense. But the, you, the, you get to the word elevator. You combined Ella Fitzgerald and Darth Vader, and you have elevator, kind of. It was just a silly word joke. Okay, noun from 1646. 1646? One. One that raises or lifts something up. One a thing that's raising or lifting something else up into the sky as 1A, an endless belt or chain conveyor with cleats, scoops, or buckets for raising materials. Yeah, this is going to be the oldest version of an elevator because they had no hydraulic elevators in uh, the 1600s. No, they, was, they had a, a bucket and stuff in a pulley system, and that would be an elevator because you're raising it up. Smart people figured out how to do that. Uh, ooh, and I, and I love that they have cleats, scoops, and buckets. 1B, a cage or platform and its hoisting machinery for conveying people or things to different levels. It does feel like you're in a cage when you go into an elevator. I love, I mean, obviously sometimes, you know, in like construction sites or, uh, you know, those types of things, it's literally just like a cage. Um, some very old uh, buildings, apartment buildings, their elevators are essentially cages because, you know, they got the vertical bars and stuff. You see those in movies and TV shows all the time. Uh, but, you know, most elevators we think of now, we don't call cages, but... I love the idea of, like, I'm trapped in a cage and I can't get out until I get to a different height level, until I'm elevated. Uh, and then, of course, everything that's involved with the elevator, the, the pulleys and the gears and the hydraulics, those are all part of the elevator. 1C, the synonym is grain elevator. It's a very specific type of elevator. 2 a movable airfoil usually attached to the tailplane of an airplane for controlling pitch. And it says to see the airplane illustration. So uh, it's going to, I think this is probably the one that goes like this, that uh, tilts sort of up and down. And I think if you probably tilt it, is it down or up? It's going to help you go up. That's the whole point of that, right? You tilt the things in a certain way, physics is just going to make the plane go up. It's going to elevate you. Okay. 
it's it's time for word of the episode time. It's time for word of the episode time. What's Spencer going to pick as the word of the episode? We don't know. He's got to figure it out. He's got to reread the words first. Elephantiasis. Elephantine. Elephant in the room. Elephant seal. Elephant's ear. Eleusinian. Elev. Elevate. Elevate. Elevated. Elevated. Elevation. And elevator. Mm, let's see. Let's see. Um, I think, I mean, you know, there wasn't anything particularly that jumped out at me. Um, you know, ele- elevators are fun. It's fun to take rides in the elevators. Uh, th- what's the thing if you're going in like a really fast one that's going real high, and then if you jump right at the end, right before it stops, you can like get a get a bit of airtime um what anything any other thing fun things about elevators i don't know i just we just watched a movie what did we watch oh yes we watched old boy i won't talk about that yet but there was a whole like elevator thing you hit two buttons at once lots of movies are featuring elevators in different ways um i don't know let's just pick elephant in the room what is the elephant in the room i don't know let's sing about it let's just sing elephant in the room there is an elephant in the room it's really big and clumsy and ponderous elephant in the room i don't know that's fine you know what i'm gonna talk about a movie that we watched which one i don't know let me look at my list uh oh yes we rewatched the hunt uh I feel like because it was released during the pandemic, uh, not a lot of people were aware of this. But uh, ooh, we really like it. You know, there's 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 political statements on both sides, g- jabbing at everybody, and um, I, we we very much enjoy this movie. And uh, I don't really want to say anything. I think I've already said too much, maybe. But it's a good one. It's uh it's violent. There's a lot of fighting, and ooh. It's just I could I could talk a while about this movie. There's some real good stuff, and uh, she is a badass. That's all I'm gonna say. Bad a lot of badassery in that movie. Okay, that's the end of this episode. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye.